Welcome to Self-Critic Reviews, and today Self-Critic will review top 20 Metallica songs. Before I begin, I'd like to apologize for the length of the video. Knowing myself, it's probably over 40 minutes long, so get ready for torture. And I don't know why I'm laughing though, because this means that nobody's gonna watch the video. And the channel will end before it even started, and I will be vindicated. Yes! Alright, so now that I've guilt-tripped you into at least attempting to watch the video, let's cut to the chase. There are songs that did not make the list, which I wanted to include in the top 20, particularly Saint Anger and The Memory Remains, because they would have been fun to review. However, I know that when making similar lists, you always fall victim to try to force different songs in just because they are different, and even if you don't think that they are better to begin with than other less unique songs. But this time, I tried not to fall into this trap. Metallica isn't really a band that I enjoy a whole lot, but I respect them as a band that paved the way for a lot of artists that I love. And at times I might not sound enthusiastic about certain songs, and that's precisely because I'm not. So let's move to number 20 on the list, Disposable Heroes. And this is one of those songs which I'm not very enthusiastic about. The song is consistently at least decent with a fantastic chorus and lyrics but I really couldn't find a better track to replace it. I mean, let's see. For example, let's take a look at Saint Anger. Its hook is amazing and the verses are great. However, lyrics are pathetic and certain riffs are so poor that I actually had to make a separate version of the track cutting out those riffs. And don't get me started on the drums. The memory remains could have worked, but aside from the greatest moment on a Metallica song ever, da 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 da, that moment. There isn't really much to write home about. Verses are terrible, and the chorus is no good, and musically it's weak. I would have included one of the instrumental tracks, but they always miss the vocals, which enhance Metallica songs a lot, in my opinion. So yeah, Disposable Heroes is a good song, with amazing vocals structurally, both in the hook and the verses, and a quality anti-war message, which sometimes, to be fair, isn't written all that well. To give you an example, the pre-chorus part, when he says, Soldier boy made of clay, now I'm named to shell, 21, only son, but he served as well, it just sounds lazy, one-dimensional, and almost spoon-fed to the listener. On the other hand, that same one-dimensionality works better and sounds more natural in the chorus. Back to the front! You will do what I say when I say back to the front. Oh, maybe I'm messing up the lyrics, but you get the gist. Musically, the track is really nothing special, unless you're impressed by a rapid guitar technique with no real substance in the melody. But I do believe that the lyrics are this good to actually overshadow the lack of anything remarkable within the instrumental. Number 19 is Seek and Destroy. The song could have been a lot higher on the list, but the problem is that aside from the incredible main riff, it kind of falls flat on all fronts, comparatively speaking. I also think James Hetfield doesn't sound all that great on this album with this style of vocals, and this problem drags a lot of the songs down, in my opinion, especially considering the fact that his vocals elevate Metallica songs on another level on every album besides Kill em All. With that said, he sounds decent on this track, especially before the hook, when he sings Running! On our way hiding, you will pay dying. Oh, that stuff. Number 18 is Ride the Lightning. What pisses me off about this track is that the first riff on this song is the best riff on the track. And besides the end of the track for a couple of seconds, it never repeats again. What kind of horrible decision making is this? The main appeal of the riff to me is that it sounds a lot like Iron Maiden. The rest of the track is consistently good to decent, much like... Uh, Disposable Heroes. The chorus is dope and reminds me of The Offspring a lot in terms of vocal structure, the way they sing. Why is uh, this track better than Seek and Destroy? Mm, good question. I think it's because the median of this track is better than the median of Seek and Destroy and the vocals are superior as well. Good answer. Number 17 is My Friend of Misery. The main reason why this track is on the list at all is because of the verses both musically and structurally, and vocally. The riff is incredible because it reminds me of melodic death metal, which I love so very much. The hook and the bridge aren't that good, to be honest, but the poor quality isn't really terrible enough to tarnish the positive aspects of this track, contrary to what happened in Saint Anger and The Memory Remains. And as a side note uh, about this song, I really hate those metronome sounds during the chorus, because they sound unprofessional on an otherwise perfectly mixed and mastered album. Black album, obviously. Number 17 is Fuel, and spoiler alert, there will be no more songs from Load Reload besides this one. So instead of reviewing this track, let me rant about those two albums. Most critics and fans consider Load to be better than Reload, and having listened to both albums at least eight or nine times at different points in my life, I fail to see why people think that. Granted, 
I think both records are utter trash, zero stars out of 10 for both. And they're definitely the most atrocious albums that I've ever given so many chances to. And they failed to impress me every time I listen to them because they're so unremarkable. I recognize the relative uniqueness of certain decisions musically, in terms of guitar playing, for example. But when they sound, when those decisions sound so terrible, what's the point even? Why? Every song sounds like crap. With regards to the song itself, the simplicity and energy work well together. Both hook and the verses are catchy and pleasant, and aside from the bridge, there are no inherent flaws on this song. It's just not strong enough to evoke the feelings that other songs that are higher on this list evoke. Number 15, Injustice For All. This song's main flaw is that it's uh, very repetitive, meaning that it repeats certain riffs too many times, even if those riffs are actually good. Had the band cut the song to battery's length, it would have been as strong as that track. However, here we are. Still a really good song, and I especially love the hook. James Hetfield really knows how to bring the best out of the instrumental sometimes. For example, when, when he sings The ultimate in vanity Exploiting their supremacy I mean, How can you not love that? It just sounds dope. Also, Bridge at the 6 minute 29 second mark is really awesome and reminds me of Master of Puppets a lot. Number 14 is Hit the Lights. Even though the song doesn't define Metallica's style, the track is dope. The in-your-face type riffs do their job and make the song recognizable in their discography. The hook's irregular time signature really works well here with those unusual James Hetfield vocals. Unlike most of the songs on the list, this song appeals to me musically more than vocally. As a side note, I love the treble and the clarity on the EQing of the guitars compared to what they did in their next three albums. Number 13 is kind of a controversial decision, but maybe not. It's Nothing Else Matters. When I first heard the song, I remember that I did not like it. And I didn't understand why people rated it so highly. Now, however, I have to say that the song grew on me. And the reason why I even rate this song is because the mastering and mixing helped it achieve the heights it probably didn't even know it could achieve itself. For example, when the drums kick in for the first time in the song, it's a very powerful moment, even though the drums themselves are really nothing special. They just sound amazing in the mix. Another powerful moment is when the pad kicks in in the intro after the guitar sort of changes. Vocals are very good, both in the verses and the hook. And the music is nice. I mean, maybe not the most complex music of all time, but it's nice. And the bridge is sort of underwhelming and is the low point of the track. And of course I'm referring to the first bridge, not the one where it, it gets a little heavier. Which is also not the best thing in the world, but it's good. Number 12, For Whom the Bell Tolls. The vocals are strong, especially in the verses. And musically, the riffing is somewhat uninteresting, but when the additional guitar kicks in at some point playing these short high notes every single step over a 3-4 time signature, the instrumental begins to resemble the quality that I expect from a self-respecting song. And the riff during the chorus is nice too. For whom the bell tolls. That riff. Number 11 is Blackened. How can I not include a song? with a melodic death metal main riff. Come on, you know the drill already. I said it about nearly every song on the list, but the hook is dope. The hook is amazing. I love it. I, and I also like the slightly irregular time signature during the verses. I mean, it's not that irregular, but it's, it's not 4-4. And the track isn't too long, which is what gave this song an edge over Injustice For All. And one thing I find slightly amusing in the bridge is how when the vocals were repeated the second time, the echo came first and then the actual vocals. It's a nice idea. And the riff at the 4 minute 13 second mark is awesome. I do find certain things questionable in this track in terms of mixing. Like, what was that clipping sound in the right channel at the 3 minute 30 second mark? And what was that moment at 5 minute 20 second mark? I mean, come on, seriously. It has no logical sense musically in terms of rhythm. The section that was supposed to follow, it just pasted randomly with no real uh, thoughts. And of course, I have to say this. About time, a band actually made a song referencing Danganronpa. Danganronpa. I mean, props to Metallica for that for sure. And I have to say this somewhere, so I might as well say it here. The bass mixing on this album is second to none. And I wish all bands mixed bass this way, the way they did on Injustice For All. 
Number 10 is The Day That Never Comes. Not sure if anybody's surprised that I have this song this high on my list, but yeah, I consider this track one of Metallica's greatest song ever in spite of the fact that they soullessly tried to recreate one. Do I look like I care though? Nah, not really. The main reason why this track isn't higher on the list is because the bridge is all over the place and makes no sense, especially the riffs at the 6 minute uh, 13 second mark are horrendous. I don't know what they were thinking. It's like they were tuning their guitars and they were like, oh wow, this sounds heavy, let's play this. No. And also I have to admit that I don't take mastering into account when rating the song at all. I remember listening to this track a long time ago, I mean, a long time ago, when it got released. And I don't remember hating the mastering this much. But upon re-listening to this track now, I was shocked by the abundance of clipping and how unnecessarily loud the drums were. And precisely because those drums were loud, a natural clipping and distortion in the guitar was heard, which is unacceptable. But I probably would still take this kind of mastering over the frying pan snares on Saint Anger. So yeah, in spite of all the criticism, I rate the song very highly, and because the main body of the track is incredible in terms of songwriting. Kudos to Metallica for that. Number 9 is Moto Breath. Yeah, this song doesn't sound like Metallica, and it sounds exactly like The Offspring. They probably took this song as the bass track for jumpstarting their career, which is why I love it. It's catchy, simple, fast, short, and straight to the point. It's just a shame that they had to bite The Offspring and couldn't come up with their own material. Shame on Metallica. <laughs> Number 8, Battery. The intro is amazing, and it just sometimes saddens me when Metallica uses dope acoustic riffs just for intros and doesn't inc include them within the songs themselves. But it's their choice, I guess. And doubt that Metallica came up with this idea, but lots of bands are influenced by it. Like, by, I mean, slow intro and rapid fire main body of the track. In terms of recent examples, the first track on the latest Night Rage album comes to mind. And the only two sections that I don't really like too much are the solo and the riff near the end, which is also repeated earlier in the track. Number seven is Creeping Death, and straight to the point. The riff at 3 minute 40 second mark, wow. One of the most outstanding sections on a Metallica song. I mean, it might not be that complex, but it hits right in the feels, for sure. It also helps that the rest of the track is strong vocally, I mean, especially the chorus is amazing, like in every track that I've said. But really, like the other tracks that I did not include, a lot of them don't have great choruses. And the main riff is also catchy musically. It was one of the first tracks that really stood out to me by Metallica when I didn't really understand metal. Number 6 is The Unforgiven. Once you become successful, these people it stole your track. Seems they never forget you forever white and black. You might ask, who is this person? You don't want to know. Anyway, this is the final Black album song on this list, so let me give you my thoughts on the album itself. For a long time, I considered it a horrible album, even worse than Death Magnetic and Saint Anger. No kidding. But upon revisiting my opinion for this list, I don't feel that way anymore. But I do believe the album is below average and is only saved by the fact that it has some genuinely amazing songs. And yeah, it is uh, the most successful Metallica album, but when has success ever translated in quality? Don't answer that. There are exceptions and I know them as well as you do. But it's just not the case with Metallica. Great mastering, great sound, but as far as songwriting goes, which is the key component to music for me, it's not all that amazing. And with regards to the song itself, uh, The Unforgiven is an amazing, iconic Metallica track in many senses. The verses are slightly below the standard one would expect for this song considering the hook, which is something else entirely. And my guess is people consider Black Album inferior to the first four albums due to the simplification of the musical component, which is definitely felt here in the song. But if you think about it, vocals were the best thing about Metallica anyway, so it shouldn't have affected the quality that much. But it did. So I guess that just means that Metallica's instrumentals should not be underworked and overlooked when writing Metallica songs. Number five is Welcome Home, Sanitarium. If Master of Puppets, the album, has a flaw, it's the fact that it doesn't have a power ballad song as strong as Ride the Lightning and Injustice for All. And if it does, this is the song. Which I think is definitely overlooked compared to One and Fade to Black, both of which are on this list. And this is no secret to anybody. Did you expect that I would not include either of those songs? 
Really? And I, for one, overlooked this song for a long time until I actually took time to re-familiarize myself with the band's discography for the compilation of this list. The slightly irregular time signature in the verses works better than the regular 4-4 would have, in my opinion. So, good decision by Metallica. The riff right before the hook is a great build-up device, and the way Hetfield's voice changes for the hook is powerful. Even though he says himself that he apparently wanted to sing the hook in a higher pitched voice and he couldn't, this really works well in my opinion. His uh, low pitched voice is... Um, I, mean, I think I'm a fan of that voice more than his high pitched voice, but his high pitched is uh, also pretty good sometimes. Then the bridge during uh, the 4 minute 15 second mark is unbelievable. The vocals are phenomenal. And I think that if this song felt more familiar to me, I would have probably placed it higher. But right now I cannot do it in good conscience. But who knows, maybe by now I already prefer it to every other song on the list. Number four is one. And I don't know, the better the song, the less I can say about it. I don't know if it's nostalgia or something else uh, entirely, but really, there is not much to say. The main riff is incredible, and it instantly immerses you into the song. And as a songwriter, I always want to imitate this riff in some of my tracks, and make it sound as cool as it sounds here. But I don't think I've ever succeeded, because uh, the eeriness, I guess, isn't easily emulated. The vocals are amazing as well, especially the structure of the verses. A good choice for time signature, one for sure. And if the track has any flaw, it's the, the riff and the bridge. Which is a dope riff, don't get me wrong, but when it's repeated until the end of time, it kind of loses its meaning. Number three is uh, Master of Puppets. And to an extent, I agree with Serhi when he once said that it's vocals that make the song, not the instrumental, which was evidenced by the Dance with the Dead remix, which is actually better than the original, in my opinion, because the vocals sound better there. But you have to give some credit to Metallica, to the bridge, because if it weren't for it, in my opinion, the original song would not have been as good. That section is almost like its own song. I'm glad this instrumental wasn't wasted on a random pure instrumental, like Orion or Call of Tulu, because it would have been buried there forever. But in this song, the section is given justice. And I have to give some credit to the riff during the hook, because it's terrific. As a side note, it still pisses me off when the verses are not in the true 4-4 time signature and skip a beat in between each line. It makes it really hard to hack bang properly. Those Metallica individuals do not care about headbanging fans at all. Number two on the list is Fade to Black. I don't really have anything to say here other than the fact that it's an incredible song with barely any flaws, if any. And it may even be the perfect Metallica song because despite the fact that it's long, every section is at least good, which is quite an achievement for this band. And yeah, I admit, the lyrics could have been written slightly better because they seem a bit one-dimensional for tackling such an important issue as a suicide, so they could have added layers as opposed to saying, I have lost the will to live, simply nothing more to give. But what's important is that this song is perfect musically, and again, rare for Metallica, especially considering the length of the track. Amazing song. Number one on this list might surprise some people, might surprise everybody, it's Dire Ziv. It's an amazing song, while admittedly, the intro riff, after the intro, not the actual intro riff, but the one after the intro, like the one before the verses start. It's a bit too long, just like in a lot of Metallica songs. But overall, the track is extremely powerful. And the main reason for that is vocals and lyrics, which are extremely well-written and well-delivered and well-structured. Like, for example, the huh in Dear Mother, Dear Father, huh, the huh is amazing. I, mean, I love it. That was largely the only thing that I remembered before I took upon this task to come up with the top 20 Metallica songs. And I can find words to describe how fitting it is and how well it underlines the rebelliousness of the track. Also, there is a lyric, same thing I've always heard from you, do as I say, not as I do, and this line is amazing. Uh, the instrumental itself isn't really anything special, but it's competent and it maximizes the potential of the vocals, which is very important. Also, please remind me, who said that infinite double bass drums could not be played over one long single power chord, like in the verses. Oh yeah, it was Serhi. And Dennis, my respawn bandmates, 
questioning my songwriting decisions. And I realized that the track might not seem like the best Metallica song ever material, because it's not as massive as Fade to Black or has a bridge section as amazing as Master of Puppets does. But to me, the vocals and the lyrics did their job to emphasize what Metallica's main strength is. And I guess it's symbolic, because when Metallica is mentioned, I really like to think, Dear Mother, Dear Father, huh? and not anything else. And still, Fade to Black would have been uh, deserved number one, so it would be Welcome Home Sanitarium or any other song from the top five. All right, that's it. Thank you for giving me a chance and watching this video. And remember, if you not be liking my opinion, you're just vitriolic.